Thanks for staying with us. It's time for women in leadership. And Susan Kiheka is the daughter of the late Nakuru veteran politician Dixon Kiheka Kimani, who earned repute in the 1970s and 1980s. After living, studying, and working in the U.S. for close to 20 years, Susan Kiheka decided it was time to come back to Kenya and become involved in the development of her home country. She returned to Kenya in late 2012 and made a stab at the Bahati parliamentary seat, but lost out at the nomination stage. She never gave up and therefore made another attempt at the Nakuru County Speaker's seat where she pushed out 12 men to capture the seat. She's now eyeing the Senate seat and recently won the Jubilee nomination for the Senate seat in Nakuru County. She's with us in studio this evening. Good evening Hi. and thank you for joining us. Sure, thank you. So um, of interest um, is the fact that there's a very prominent billboard on your way <laughs> to Nakuru which a lot of gentlemen say is likely to cause accidents because of how stunning you are but let's not, <laughs> let's not get into that just yet. Your decision um, to venture into politics, what informed that decision? I think, uh, like you very well said at the beginning, I do come from a political family, but it's not just that. It's just growing up, I would accompany my dad as he went out there to do his uh, political rallies, and I became very interested in what he was doing. I liked it, and I could also see the kind of change that he really made and the difference he made in the lives of the people. So from a very early age, I knew that at some point I wanted to be a politician, so to speak, but I would say a leader. But I also really I don't remember growing up and being around women politicians so I always knew or my dad also used to say that first I must go out there get my education and then maybe be able to do that and he didn't also seem to think that I would do that so anyway uh, that was always something that I knew ultimately and eventually I would do mm -hmm. but I just knew that it wasn't what I wanted to begin a career in mm -hmm. uh, so I've done everything else I went to school did uh, actually studied uh, political science and then uh, studied uh, law practiced the law for a long time and then decided it was I just woke up and decided it was the right time and so I came back. So you spent a, long, a, a, a lot of time in the US coming back home um, and deciding to venture into politics did you have to drop your father's name to get a chance to get heard did you have to initially it was difficult because um, anywhere or anyone or uh, in any conversation it was always not necessarily Susan but oh the daughter of so and so so as much as and I really am as, as proud as I am of my dad's achievement I wanted to be my own person and so I've had to prove myself over and over again and I see the narrative now being a little bit different mm -hmm. so it doesn't always now begin with that but it's more I think people have seen and realized that I am also my own person and that I can do it I'm not just riding on the name let's fast forward to you setting your sights on the Nakuru County Senate seat putting yourself on collision with one of Kenya's most known opposition and multi-party democracy champions Koegu Amwere and indeed seasoned politician Jenga Mungai. How confident were you of this uh, Jubilee nomination going at it with these veteran politicians? Uh, share with us that experience. Actually, um, it's interesting because I, when I came out and said that I wanted to run for the Senate, it was probably almost two years ago. So none of them at the time had thrown their hearts in the ring, so to speak. Um, but I kind of, now looking back, I don't think I even considered who else is running. I just felt like I was the best match for that seat for Nakuru County. So I went ahead and threw caution to the wind. Um, at the time, I noticed there was a, a narrative by the male politicians trying to box me into the women rep seat. That all oh, she's going to be running for the women rep, we are going to put her in that lineup. And that would surprise me because I was like, I never said I wanted that seat. Nothing is wrong with that seat, but I it just, I'm not interested in that. Uh, but I also champion a lot of women causes, and I think that's also why they were able to box me that way. So that's why I came out early, and I let everybody know that's what I was interested in. And then over time and along the way, the two gentlemen plus others jumped in. And that was the same question that I would get. Are you afraid? Are you now, are you sure you want to stay in this or do you can still jump over to another seat? But I always believed their time was up. 
and I wasn't wrong. I could feel from the people of Nakuru County as I moved around, as I talked to them, I could feel they were ready for change. So I don't think people are necessarily looking backwards for those who had been there so many years ago, but they were interested in fresh faces, fresh visions, and people who would be able to do things a little differently. And I think we've seen that across the country after the nominations that mm -hmm. we had this time. And talking about, um, you know, you being, for lack of a better word, being boxed, out of this, um, um, you know, the interest in the Senate into perhaps the women's rep seat. There's a tablet that claimed, um, there's a lot of things that were claimed. For once, your well-oiled campaign, which started sometime in February 2015, wowed many, including those who contested against you. And people asked frequently what the source of your money was. Uh, I guess it's an interesting question and it's one that I've faced in every interview that I've done, Lillian, and I was hoping I wouldn't hear it tonight, but here it is. So I think we'll just address it. Like I said, Lillian, I have been a lawyer in the U.S. for many years. I've been a prosecutor employed by the U.S. government. I've been, um, I have had my own law practice in the U.S. I came back to Kenya and I have been the speaker of Nakuru County Assembly for the last four years. So when people come out here and act like I shouldn't have a penny to my name, then I'm wondering where that narrative is coming from and why. Why, why me? I don't think I've had any, I've done any more financially than others, but I haven't had that question asked of them. There is nothing or uh, nothing illegal that I've engaged in, and if so, they, by now they should have brought it out since they've been talking so loud and so much about it. And again, I'll say it here again, I think it's a sexist uh, issue that's raised. Because I'm a woman, because I'm female, then maybe it's not expected that I would be able to do a serious campaign. And I want to let them know that I think the times have changed and even us as women, we have people who believe in us, who come out and fundraise for us because they believe in the visions that we bring to the table uh, and in what we'll be able to do for the people uh, that we are uh, asking for their votes. Mm -hmm. So I've had a lot of support and I think that's where, um, that's how I've been able to do a serious campaign. And I'm also a bit strategic, so I have been, that's why I've carried it over for a while consistently aggressively and that has surprised them because they thought maybe I would do it for a month entire but we planned it out and we were able to accomplish what we accomplished by getting that many voters in Akuru to believe in us because also of the of what we were bringing to the table the vision your appointment to the pres presidential re-election campaign team did that come as a surprise yes I would say uh, because I wasn't expecting it and I wasn't even sure who was going to be in that team and it also caused a lot of hula baloo but we saw that across the country but I also believe there must be something they've seen in me which also the people of Nakuru County have seen when I ran for the Senate seat under Jubilee I was able to get over 270,000 votes for nomination so clearly there, is, there must be something that the presidential team so as well as the voters of Nakuru County. Mm -hmm. So as much as I was surprised, I am up to the task and I think I'm able to do it. I believe I'm able to do it. And I want to forward some of the questions that are coming in here uh, before we carry on um, with um, our conversation. Somebody here is saying, um, I'm valid from Naivasha Karagita for sure. I want you to be my senator. I like you a lot and I believe you will manage to change Nakuru. My question is, for us flower farmers, how will you help us? Somebody here is saying that Naivasha uh, politics seems to have been ignored um, and that Nakuru is at the center stage um, of priority issues from leaders. And finally, somebody is saying, hi Lillian, say hi to my Senator Iron Lady in waiting. And tell her I would love to hear her comment on the growing number of independent candidates who lost in Jubilee primaries, especially from Nakuru, where most of them are MCAs who she has been working closely with as their boss in the assembly and also during her campaigns. Uh, this is Ben from Naivasha. Naivasha loves you, Susan. So a lot of love coming in for you. Um, let's begin with um, the county assembly, the Nakuru County Assembly. Your experience there, somebody here saying you as their boss, um, very heated sessions in that particular assembly. Just share briefly with us um, what your experience was there. I think it was like an extremely uh, great experience, not necessarily great in a positive way all the time, but a great uh, place to learn the ropes. I came in, actually coming back into the country after having been gone forever, so to speak, 
uh, not ever having been in politics before that, and just kind of just jumped into the fire, because that's what I would call it. Nakuru is a very controversial politically uh, place. So when you have 55 elected MCAs plus 19 nominated MCAs, so I had a bigger house, the county assembly, than the current Kenya Senate. And uh, then you have them from all different parties, and uh, Nakuru is also very cosmopolitan. It's also very, um, this town and, you know, I mean, it's completely different. The mix is different. But um, also I had a lot of, like, former councillors, former mayors. So I had everything and anything. And uh, like I said, having come in without any political experience, it really was a learning curve. Um, we had a lot of heated debates, a lot of probably things I'm not so proud of that maybe you all watched on TV. But at the end of the day we overcame. I was able to help develop uh, the members of the county assembly almost, I would say, from zero to 100. In the sense that when we walked in, when we came in, they didn't understand how you make laws, what you do and all that. And we were able to provide a lot of um, um, resources to bring them up to speed. Mm -hmm. And I would tell you that by the time I was, uh, we are now at the end of our term, a lot of them have really, really grown. So I'm proud of that. I'm Where does the tagged Iron Lady come from? <laughs> We've had a lot of also probably um, some very contentious issues during our term. Um, we've had at the beginning where maybe the county assembly uh, rejected nominees by the governor, which I think was the first county assembly to do that in the Republic of Kenya. And we really, I really stood my ground because at that time it would have been easy to just throw in the towel and say, okay, fine, let them stay. And we fought until it ended up going to court and ultimately the court sided with us. Uh -huh. I've also had issues where there were physical fightings in the assembly. Where one the MCAs. Oh yes, where one day the MCAs went crazy, but also against me as well. I mean, I wouldn't lie, it was the lowest point, but I've had to run out of that assembly. But at the same time, I was able, when some said we would not hold session, I was able to walk in there despite the disorder, despite the um, um, physical violence that was going on, and I made them have the session, and I made them continue uh, and come down and... You finally still went back, back despite physical assault. Oh yes, it was like I always say, it was like walking into, maybe when you think of an ocean and there's a shark and you're walking in there in between the teeth and you just keep walking. So any side, anywhere, it could bite or close its mouth on you. But I had to do it because if I didn't, then I was going to lose control. The and I was not going to lose control. The political party uh, primaries, for you that experience, and indeed uh, somebody here talking about some of the MCAs who lost out who are now opting um, to go as independents. For you, that experience, was it flawless? Could it have been done better? I think in anything in life, you can always, look, looking back to 2020 vision, you can always say it could have been done better. But I also think Jubilee really tried the best that they could. Obviously, there, may be, uh, they have, there were some issues in some places. For example, the first day, I mean, it was, it was not smooth at all. I mean, materials were reaching there in the afternoon, and we were able to uh, postpone, and they did that across the country, so that we could then do them, I think, on Wednesday versus that Friday. So the beginning definitely wasn't smooth. Things didn't go very easily. But the second time around, I think it was a lot smoother. It was, I guess, as good as they could have done it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I also understand that when those who felt that things didn't go well and they wanted to go independent or now leave Jubilee and run independently, that's also their democratic right. You know, the Constitution allows them to do that. So, I mean, I can only wish them luck, mm -hmm. but, um, and that's all I can say and about that. And there's a lot of, you know, questions coming in about what you're um, intending to do about the traffic Nala, Gil Gil, flower farmers, a high uh, medical rate, a lot of questions coming in. But in the Senate, your oversight role, um, should you become Senator um, Nakuru, what do you intend to do differently? What, what do you intend, what changes do you intend to bring for the people of that county? I think, one, uh, we've had a very, very absentee senator currently in the last five years. And, uh, I mean, that's common knowledge. Um, so first, the first thing that I intend to do differently is make sure that Nakuru feels and enjoys representation at the Senate, which we have not been able to do. Um, also, 
and Naivasha as well. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, part of Nakuru County. Yeah. And I, I see, like you said, a lot of people from Naivasha are writing in and saying they are not feeling the representation. Yeah. Exactly. And as I went around actually during uh, this campaign season, and also as a speaker, because I would go out to the MCAs, to their wards, and sort of attend functions, be able to learn what the issues they are facing out there are, I did realize there's a lot of problems at the flower farms. We have a lot of employees there, a lot of, uh, Kenya is one of the biggest uh, exporters of flowers and actually Nakuru County I think is number one in Kenya. So scale wise you can see it's a big deal. But at the same time, we, I have heard the cries of the employees uh, in Naivasha of the flower farms. You hear that on average they probably make 6,000 shillings a month and they work six days a week. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I would want to be able to come in and help uh, by bringing uh, petitions, by changing, by making laws, helping make laws that would address the plight of these flower farmers mm -hmm. so that uh, we don't have the flower farms making billions in profit while you are really doing this on the back of struggling Nakuru County people who are giving their all but getting nothing out of it. So I would want to be able to come in and help so that the working conditions become better for these people and the remuneration as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from Speaker of the Nakuru County Assembly now to the Senate, um, which um, of course this is going to be determined um, come the August polls, is this just the beginning for you are you are we probably going to see Jin, uh, Susan Kiheka eyeing an even bigger seat perhaps even the presidency someday? Oh, Lillian, I don't know. That's a big jump. However, I've always believed in being open-minded. I never, when I came in and I ran for MP, I never thought I would be a speaker. Like, that never really crossed my mind. Until when that didn't work, I'm also a very persistent person. Then I knew there has to be something else, and that's how I pursued the speakership and got it. When I got, when I became the speaker, I probably thought that I would go back to being an MP. So I never thought of the Senate, yet here I am. Mm -hmm. And I think and hopefully I'm right, I will be the Senator of Nakuru County, God willing. Uh, so obviously I'm also, I believe in wanting to grow. I, I, I think people should also want leaders who have ambition as well, because then you're not sitting there content, then that's when probably you don't do as much as you should do, because you know probably this is it. So I'm young, and I think uh, the sky is the limit. So let's go in there and uh, work very hard as a speaker, I mean as a senator, and then from there I don't know what direction my, my life takes, I don't know what direction my career takes, but I'm open to whatever, be it the highest office in the land, I don't know at some point. Do you still point. practice law here locally? No I don't. Okay. No, I'm actually licensed in the US, not here. So as we close, the question is, you're a mother of two, Susan, what is the secret behind your youth? You are <laughs> extremely beautiful and that's the bulk of messages that are coming in you look very young share with us the secret oh Lillian I just wish I knew I think it's the, the the having to juggle the running around so much that I probably I don't know maybe jeans good jeans I don't know maybe I should just be thankful to my parents but I'm not so sure that I see myself that way from what I hear from you and from the people I, I don't Think of myself your that way. Like I said, people say that is actually a traffic hazard <laughs> for the gentlemen. The Kenyans are so kind. Yeah. I think they are so kind. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, you know, uh, we're closing now. Your message to the people um, of Nakuru County, if you could look at that camera and tell them what change um, the Iron Lady, because that's what they're calling you here, is bringing to Nakuru County. Okay, I want to first of all say hello to all those who are watching me from Kenya, actually, in general, but specifically from Nakuru County. And first of all, thank you for voting for me during just the recently concluded uh, Jubilee Party nominations. And as we approach August 8th, I will also be needing you again as our president will as well. Uh, so I'll ask you to come out and vote then. But uh, I would want you to know that I'll work very hard as your senator. I'll make sure that you will feel the representation of, uh, by your senator in, at uh, the national level, that I'll be very uh, on top of oversight so, so that I can make sure that no public money, no public resources are um, misused in the county, but that they go directly to doing what they are supposed to be doing, be it making sure that our women and our families have water, be it making sure that the roads are done, that um, there is medicine in the hospitals, that um, the kids when they go to school, the ECDs have teachers, that everything that's supposed to be done is done. I will also be working very hard and very closely with the communities of Nakuru County, be they like uh, the Naivasha flower farms, in making sure that I'm bringing laws that make a difference to you, Wanjiko, in Nakuru County. And I will also be 
working very hard at representing Nakuru County and the interests of Nakuru County citizens at the national level. Thank you very much for that. And somebody here saying Nakuru and Naivasha in particular is lucky to have you uh, as our probable Senator, we are leading in geothermal production in the African region, second in flower exports in the world, like you mentioned, tourism, and now SGR, which we trust under your leadership. All this will take us to the next level. You 